What is up guys, this is John, aka Pokemon, and I am joined with Chris to go over the power rankings once again for the D-League. Chris? Yep, we're going to do the power rankings. It's that thing where we tell you which teams are the best and which teams are the worst. And this week it's virtually the same as last week because the winners keep on winning and the losers keep on losing. That is about right. So this is actually going to be, I mean you can see how long it is, but it's probably going to be a shorter one. We don't have as much to say. Um, so... I think we'll, we'll probably go through these pretty quickly. Uh, Chris, I'm going to let you take it away. What, what happened with the first four? Well, actually, the first three. Sam, we can talk about. Uh, Miguel is still number one super champ extreme because he wins, and he wins big. Uh, he is toppled George as the guy who puts up big, scary win numbers. Uh, he pretty much destroyed Gary with Bisharp, which wasn't even his true win condition, but was still just staggeringly powerful and ran through his team. George won against Baby Roger. Uh, not quite as huge a landslide, but still a solid and impressive victory for George, which is what he is all about. Adam beat Demo. Adam is back on the winning path after that one loss against Miguel, for which you can hardly blame him because at this point, no one can stop Miguel. So the top three teams pretty much stay where they are. Yeah, and honestly, I don't see that changing whatsoever until George and Miguel play again. <laughs> uh, I don't think Adam plays anyone outside of his conference, and I don't see him nope. losing to anyone in his conference, except possibly for Sam. We'll have to wait to see that, but I really think this top four is going to stay the same. And Sam is number four, and uh, Sam actually had a really impressive win. Now, he played against the worst team in the league. He beat him again. I guess it's not as, as impressive as, you know, if he had beaten <laughs> anyone else. But what he did yeah. do is, uh, I know we were definitely criticizing him in the beginning of the season. It seemed like, you know, he wasn't using the core he drafted. He wasn't looking for win conditions. He wasn't doing this or that. And uh, this game, he put everything together. You know, he found his win condition. He preserved it. Uh, he knew what he needed to win, and he just made sure he systematically kept him around for what would happen. Like, one of the big things... Um, I know watching his narration, he's like, okay, I didn't need Rotom Heat because he didn't bring Talonflame, so I was able to play a little more risky with it, get some damage, don't overpredict this and that, and that's big. When you know you what you do need and don't need, it just makes the game so much easier. And um, he got his hazards yeah, I mean, up. Yeah, having, having an expendable switch in is huge. Yes, yeah. It's huge. It not only saves you like long-term differential where you don't have to wear down multiple things to get safe switches in, but you know, it just it it gives you a mental momentum. Yes. Yeah, and you know, he controlled the hazard game. Um what else did he do? I, he just really did everything great. And, I mean, John's a great opponent. You know, he hasn't been getting any wins, but he's in it every goddamn game. And I think he played a really good game. That was down to the wire. And I don't yeah, know. I, it, was, yeah. it was an incredible game. And, honestly, the score, the fact that Sam only won at 1-0 is not as telling about the quality of the game as anything else. Like, it was a good 1-0. And even if he had lost 1-0, it still would have been a good 1-0, you know. It was a much more complex thing where nobody really goofed up. It was just, you know, who played slightly better and had the slightly better matchup. And it happened to be Sam. He put all the pieces together. So Yeah, so Sam, I think Sam is, um, at this point, a really big contender. I We could see him win it. Now, I, I think he's definitely the low man of the totem pole when it comes to the playoffs. But... Uh, definitely watch out for Sam. You know, he's definitely put everything together. He has a really good team, and I think he's finally figuring out how to play in this play style. Now, the bottom four, again, this one didn't really change. Um, but, you know, I guess, uh, Chris, you can do you can do a quick run-through. I, I mean, honestly, yeah, we, and then I, I guess we can do a little bit about playoff predictions if we want, but there's just not much to talk about this week. Yeah, not a uh, huge thing to talk about. We're going to go ahead and put Gary ahead because while he did get his stuff magnificently pushed in by Bisharp, he, you know, made some strong plays at the beginning, brought some cool stuff. It was just he overlooked one huge weakness, which cost him a lot of differential points. Uh, but it's also worth noting Gary probably took the loss the best out of anyone that's taken a loss in this league. Uh, yeah. You know, he came off of it. He was like, I lost. I know why I lost. It's not going to happen again. Uh, I want to do things better, you know, and I still had fun with it, which is the perfect sportsmanship attitude approach. Uh, it's hard, and it's a thing that gets lost a lot in these things when you have people who are competitive and they take things hard because you want to win. 
but it is still about having fun and enjoying the game you're playing regardless of win or lose um yeah even yeah you want to win i completely so, agree and well and one reason he's ahead of everyone else uh I decided to cut you off on your little quick run through, <laughs> but he lost to Miguel, and everyone's lost to Miguel, and Miguel has crushed almost everybody. So losing badly to Miguel, I and then taking the loss as well as he did, I I think it says more than you know any of the other battles beyond Sam's. It's just I think he he really wants to be in the league. He really wants to improve. He had a big win the week before, and you know while he still overlooked that and he did get crushed, I really think he's going to be pretty solid in this league. Yeah, and I mean, you got to look at it as he's still only one and one despite the team being, you know, much worse. So Gary still has potential to show us what he's about. Uh, while he is not necessarily mathematically out of the playoff picture, he is virtually impossible for him to get in there. Uh, but he can still do some stuff. Going along with his partner in the virtually impossible to make the playoffs is a young baby Roger, the Roger Rabbit Showdown. Um, Another loss, uh, a little bit of hacks in the match mm -hmm. that could have affected the match. I think probably it was more disheartening than anything. Uh, from what we tell, I'm not. Neither of us can really figure out what Rogers' win condition was for the yeah. match. And if you don't have a strong apparent win condition, it's kind of hard to do it. And saying uh, that, like he didn't bring a bad team. It was just like it I was, it, yeah it was almost a it was almost an offensive blitz team mm -hmm. maybe you know i mean with a little bit of, i mean obviously he didn't play full offensive blitz he played a full match but you know it almost seemed like a team that was built to trade one for ones and come out on top at the end yeah that's exactly anything. what it looked like and i mean the hacks definitely did not help but even without the hacks i don't with the hacks he had no chance of winning that without the hacks i i think george had an edge but we'll never know maybe roger had something planned and we just weren't able to see it i don't know our criticism last week was hyper offensive no win condition and this week he lost you know hyper offensive no win condition so i mean if demo which is gonna be the next guy didn't lose as bad as he did i mean roger probably would have been lower but you know roger still played a good game against a great opponent and i mean Roger's good at battling, so he, he, he stuck in it the entire yeah, yeah. time. Yep, and you know, uh, bad luck's bad luck, so it worked a little bit for him yeah. to be that way. But uh, next up is uh, Demo, Madman Demo, who unfortunately took a, another big loss this week, and it kind of seems like it's the same story as last week, an early death, and he was just mentally shaken and rattled. Uh, lost Nito King first turn to a surprise psychic. Still managed to make some really good plays, some really clever plays. Uh, you won't see this match, unfortunately, because no one got the replay saved or recorded it live. But uh, we've got a breakdown from some of the coaches, and you know, really good kill on his part by P2 switching. Uh, Porygon 2 in on a, uh, you know, on, what is it, Magnezone, tracing the Magnet pull, and then having HP ground, and Adam not realizing that Magnet pull was not, like, Shadow Tag, and that they didn't cancel each other out, being trapped in and getting killed. It's good instincts, good, you know, use of what he's got, unfortunately, it's just not enough when he falls apart out of the start. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's sad. I still think Demo has a chance to make the playoffs. It really just depends on how well he plays against Sam. That's all he needs to beat at this point. And if he can do it twice, he's probably in. But, it, you know, that's going to be a really big test. I would definitely give the edge to Sam right now, but I do not count Demo out whatsoever. It's just... No, it's yeah. it's really between Demo and Sam. Um, I think it's more Sam's to lose at this point, but, you know... Demo's the guy that's got to fight to get there. He only plays Sam uh, once. He plays John Origins once again, and then he plays someone out of conference. He plays Miguel. He plays Miguel this week. So, you know, a big one against Miguel could help. It's oh, yes, it could. looking super likely, but, you know, if ever there were a week to catch up, it would be this week as Sam goes up against Adam. So that could be a good equalizing week for him. Yeah, so I mean, he could get Adam, a big win yeah. or they might possibly both uh, lose to a really good opponent and which that wouldn't, wouldn't hurt him if he can beat Sam. So, I mean, he has many opportunities. It's just, you know, will he be able to snatch any of them? And then uh, yeah. John Origins had another. He played really good, like usual, and then lost in a, a close battle. 
per usual. Like usual. Yep. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, speaking about things that are out, like he's technically not out of it. He could tie and get in to the playoffs on differential if Sam <laughs> loses every match. Demo loses every match, but his one against Sam, and he and John Origins wins all of his and gets a better differential. Yeah, it's, one thing <laughs> I've noticed. With, a lot. Yeah, I mean we so we have you know this is a short video, so we might as well talk about a few things. And one thing I definitely want to talk about is it's kind of interesting in this league. It's almost like this league's full of so many good battlers that the playoff race isn't as interesting because there's a few people who have really adapted to just this format. And the other people are just playing like a regular Smogon, you know, 6v6 game. And they're playing great. Like, John is always in it. And he's always playing great. Roger is always in it. And he's always playing great. Demo is always in it. And it's just, you know, some of the other people have just adapted really quickly. So it's, while well, every match is good, it, it seems like four or five people always know their win condition of always bringing specific counters, this and that. And it's... They're just almost like if one of the top four goes against someone in the bottom four, it's almost always a good game, but they usually destroy them. And when the top players play, it's almost it's it seems like it's more blowouts there. <laughs> one person playing better. It's just I don't know. It's kind of weird when you look at that. Like yeah, it's yeah. it's a strange thing um, to kind of figure out and deal with, but it's it's the nature of it being a, a smaller group, a shorter season, mm. and things like that. You know that. The playoffs are just going to be either very packed, but kind of like, okay, a lot of weird things have to happen for people to make it in, or huge blowouts. Because, uh, I mean, we do have the first person that's clinched a playoff spot in Miguel this yeah. week. Yeah, so, and uh, if we're going to if we're gonna look at the playoffs, um, I mean, it's it's definitely going to be Miguel and George. That one's a, almost a lock. It, it's, it's a lock. It's not going to – there's nothing going to change. There. I mean, George has to lose out, and – Whoever wins between Gary and Roger this week is the only one with a chance. I don't. So. I don't even think they could match differential. Like it's almost. I think it would be almost impossible at this point. Yeah, George would have to lose out big. Yeah, I think George he'd have would to have get to like lose out five out massively. Six um, yeah, but you know, it's possible. Nobody's out of it. Yeah, but so um. No, honestly, I, I think that's about it. I think next week's going to be a little more interesting. I think there's going to be some matches, you know. We can start looking at everyone's uh, things a little more in depth, like the bottom four and more maybe talk about how they played, see if they're improving for next year, the top four, who we think's getting in, themselves in a position to win it all. Uh, I'm really interested to see George and Miguel play a second time and then a third time. That's really exciting. And I think Sam and... Uh, Adam, Sam and Adam play this week, which yeah. is a huge match. That's a very um, big match. So it's yeah. there's a lot of really big matches coming up this week for just whatever reason. Not many people got the videos up. Um, no one really changed spots. I think, yeah, it, literally the top four won and the top bottom four lost. Yeah, yeah. It's just you know, I wish we could uh, give you guys uh, a, you know, a little <laughs> bit more in depth analysis, but they, it's the the good teams won, the the, the worst teams lost. I, I, it's, yeah, yeah. It was it was a straightforward week, unfortunately. But uh, but to know. end it, if you guys are fans of the GBA, season three is coming up soon. I cannot tell you what date and any of the things like that, but I do know a trade happened. Some more trades have been proposed. Things or people are coming together. People are getting back into it. So you'll yep, probably the see trade it, yeah. video there. We actually I did a trade video with uh, Adam. It's already been uploaded by the time you see this. So if you missed it, go to the channel and check it out. We talk about it fairly in depth it's uh, adam of the anaheim mighty ducklets and i Ooh, so i am excited to see that honestly <laughs> uh, so that yep, adam should be adam's cool. a big prepared nerd with notes and all kinds of stuff that so. is awesome well <laughs> you have that to look forward to i know there's going to be draft things the draft should be in this month um whoever is replacing kyle should be uh, announced soon I, I don't know. I, I'm guessing there's going to be videos for there's, these things. There's a lot of great news coming up, so just uh, yeah. stay tuned to the Twitter. Uh, you're going to hear most of the announcements on Twitter, and then you'll see some more in-depth stuff on this channel here. Okay, but that's about it. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, all that good stuff, and we will talk to you guys next time. Peace. Yep.